everyone. Welcome to Remote STEM Class. It's Mr. Dowd here. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend because I know I did. Um, so we're going to continue on working on our household object. Remember, yours can be anything you want. I know a lot of you guys have been working on it. And I'm really happy to see it. Um, yeah, you got plenty of time to work on it. We have all of this week and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. All right, so it's due right before break. All right, so we only have a week and a half till break. Woo! I don't know how about you guys, but I'm very excited for break. So let's continue on with this. All right, so where was I last? So I did the sides. I know on mine, I didn't leave a lot of space in between like in this. I think it'll be fine though. So my next is going to be doing the top. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll do this bar and those two bars. And I don't know if I'm going to do this little cutout. Not sure about that yet. Um, but yeah. So I'm not going to do cutting out like I did last time. I'm just going to put in different bars, okay? That'll be my plan. So how long is this? It is... And 41. So if I do this as 140. One forty. Actually divide that by two, so I want seventy. Cool. Seventy and how wide? Ooh, I don't remember how wide I made these. I wish I kept some of the originals. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's going to be for the top. I'm going to make it a about five, three. Let's make it thin. And then let's make it. Uh, let's go 15. Does 15 look good? Yeah, 15 looks fine. Now, how high is this? This is. Oh, it's set to zero. So that doesn't help. Let's just go ahead and raise this up. Actually, I should know if I click on this part here. So it should be about 90. That looks about right. Let's bring this over. Oop. I want to put this right in the middle. So I'm going to go look from the top and I'm just going to drag that over a tiny bit and just have it right over that. Actually, when I want that to be thinner. So let's make this 10. Because what I'm doing with this bar is I'm making this piece right here. All right. So. Is that connected? Yep, that looks good. All right, I'm also going to put in a bar coming from the this bottom here up. Just to have a separator. Actually, what do they have in the inside here? So they have a couple bars in. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this. And then paste it. That way there'll be a little in between everything. So I should be able to align this, I'm hoping. Yeah, no. Too many objects to align. <laughs> All right, let's get this over a tiny bit. And bring it just like that. So now that should be above that. that looks pretty good so far. So I'll have a section toothbrush, toothbrush. And this is where my toothpaste will be, just like that. Alrighty, that's going to be all I do today. So I will see you guys tomorrow, Tuesday. All right, I'm going to try to put on the roof. So 
the roof's going to go like this. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous. I think it's, I don't know if it's going to stay on. So, I'm supposed to use the frosting like glue, but I don't know. We will see. They give me a cardboard thing too, like this, to put on the side of the roof so it holds it up. Use a lot of frosting for this stuff. Oops, there. Now, let's see, I'm just looking at the directions. I don't wanna mess it up. So I guess it's gonna go like this. And then I probably should put frosting in between to keep it held together. And then this, so this, this comes with it for the roof, kind of like cheating, but you know what, I'll take it because it keeps it up. <laughs> there. So my frosting on the top and the roof is on. Looks pretty good, huh? So the other side of this is Santa with his boots going down the chimney. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Actually, you could color that, but I'm not taking it off, so I don't want it to fall down. All right, so now you're ready to decorate it. So um, they did give me a little gingerbread man and a little Christmas tree. And they gave me some candy. And I have a little bit of a, like, the tip of this icing that I can use, the tip to go on the icing so I can make, like, designs with it. So, let's see what we got. So the tree, this little tree, which I'll put him here. So I guess we'll put icing on the outside when he's like this. I guess I could use it on the windows, right? This is when I wish I had Miss Bloomer to help me. Because the icing's going all over the place. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it like this. This is like snow. I'm gonna pretend this is snow. All right? Icicles, see? Gotta be creative. Ooh, the stuff gets everywhere. And then we could open up these like little, we could put some of this frosting on the roof. And we could stick little candies to it. Ah. Actually, we could put them up here too. I don't know if you guys hear that, but these little candies are going everywhere. I crack myself up. All right, so I'm making it like this. Anywhere where there's frosting, that's where I'm putting them. And I'm putting snow here. here. See? 
It looks like icicles, if I do say so myself. All right, so now I'm going to take a break and fix the icing and I'll return and we will finish decorating and we'll finish decorating him, this little guy, and the tree. Okay, see you tomorrow. Hey, welcome back Gators. Happy Monday. Today we are going to be working on scene two of our show. Okay, so just as a couple of reminders, scene one was all about exposition. Right? This is where you're introduced to the characters, you're introduced to the setting, and you're introduced to the plot, okay? The conflict of the play. Scene two is all about the rising action. All right? Rising action is where the characters become involved in the plot. All right? This is where they become involved in the conflict all right so as you can see in our first scene wally and barry met in the park they had a problem wally was fired from his job they're trying to think of a way to get a new job but then they meet these two other characters a mother and her son nathaniel right and we saw that a problem arose with them the problem was they needed to get medicine that was very very expensive and we know from Wally's character profile that Wally really wants to help other people, that Wally really wants someday to have a family of his own. All right. So we know that Wally is the type of character that's going to try his best to help. So now we get into scene two. All right. Scene two, where they become involved in the plot and the conflict. Well, if the conflict is going to be trying to help the mother and her child, right? Wally and Barry are going to have to find a way to get this medicine for the kid. So what I propose is that Wally and Barry want to help the mother save her son, and they come up with this plan. They know that Bobo's is the only store that has the medicine to help their son. Wally and Barry decide to rob Bobo's store. So this whole scene that I'm going to be writing here for scene two is going to be coming up with a plan to rob Bobo's medicine store, the pharmacy. Okay? We're also going to be introducing a few more characters. All right, you're going to see Carrie the caribou. Carrie works at Bobo's pharmacy. All right, and Carrie is good friends with Wally and Barry. All right, you're also going to be introduced to Sally the seal, another of their friends. And if you remember from the character profile, Sally the Seal is Wally's most important being. All right, so I really want you guys to think about what you're going to put into your scene two, how it connects to the character profile, as well as how it connects to your main story. All right, so today you're going to be doing your outline for scene two. All right, and then tomorrow we're going to start writing the dialogue for scene two. Can't wait to see what you come up with, Gators. Keep working hard. Great job. Hi, guys. So it's that time of year when we start celebrating some family traditions. And maybe you've seen this guy around. Does he look familiar? The elf on the shelf. There he is. He's a little elf who gets himself into mischief. So the elf on the shelf is a Christmas tradition for some people where a special elf is sent to your home from the North Pole and he's there to encourage kids to behave themselves. He watches you in the daytime and then at night he reports back to Santa and he lets Santa know what's going on. So maybe you celebrate that tradition and you have an elf watching you in your house. Or maybe not. But today we're going to be drawing a picture of the elf on the shelf. Now, I'm going to show you how to draw him 
just like this. So I already drew them, but I'm going to draw them again with you. And if you want to draw a picture of the elf getting into some mischief, you can also do that too. So it's up to you. If you just want to follow along with me and draw a picture of this little mischievous elf, just like he is sitting on the shelf, you can. But if you want to make him getting into some trouble or getting into some mischief, you can do that too. Okay, so I'm going to keep my drawing nearby just to keep it there as a little reference so I can see it. And I'll take you through the steps to get to this finished product. Okay, so you're going to need a pencil for right now. Grab a pencil. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to start with his head in that little Santa hat that he wears. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the hat. And like I always say, look at the shape that you see first. So we'll start off with just a little bit of a triangular shape. Triangle shape for that Santa hat. So that's going to be the red area. And then I'll make that little white furry area next. And then we can do his little head inside that space. Okay, so I think next I'm just going to start with his hair. I'm going to do that little hair, fun little hairstyle that he has. Okay. And I'll draw the shape of his face. He has very distinct looking cheeks. They really kind of pop out a little bit. So I'll draw those very round cheeks on the elf. Like that. And his little nose, right about there. And two ovals for his eyes. And smaller ovals on the inside. He always has that little same little expression, like he's watching you. And he's got that little smile. I'll make a little mark right there. And a little chin. Okay. I think that's pretty good so far. He's got some little eyelashes and eyebrows, raised eyebrows. Like he's surprised at what he sees going on. And then you can just leave a little white area inside here and then darken in the rest. Leave a little white area and then darken in the rest for those little watching eyes. Okay, and his ears are kind of low set. Right about there is one. There's another little elf ear. Okay, so next I'm going to move on to that almost like a kind of reminds me of a star. His little scarf that little fabric that's right at the top of his outfit so something like that is good okay and he's got a pretty simple looking body shape straight arms unless you have him posed in a way where he's like getting into some mischief knocking things over or I don't know maybe he falls into someone's coffee cup these elves always get themselves into some little predicament and kind of like rectangular shapes for the legs I think is fine and then we want to make it look like he's sitting on that shelf so I'm going to start a little wider at that knee part and then it's going to get a little a little thinner and here's some overlapping where I want his leg to look like one leg is on top of the other leg there there we go and you can use a ruler if you want to to create that look of him sitting on a shelf if you're going to have him just sitting still 
can do that, or you can just freehand some lines, some horizontal lines there, to just kind of indicate that he's sitting on a shelf. All right, so I'm done with my simple drawing of my little elf on the shelf. If you want to go on and make your elf involved in some little mischief, you can make him doing something, create a background where he's getting himself into maybe a little trouble of his own. Okay, guys, so have fun making your elf on the shelf. He's watching you. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Virtual PE. I'm Miss 3D. All right, so we're gonna continue with our um, cardio kickboxing and Miss Yumin's gonna continue to work out two of your muscles. So let's get to it, guys. Hey guys, happy Monday. Um, I'm sitting on the floor today because we're gonna do a workout on the floor. So today we're gonna do our pecs, which is our chest, and our triceps, back of our arms. For our pecs, we're just gonna go back to our regular push-ups. We haven't done those in a while. Okay, so again, when you do your push-ups, make sure you do them properly. If you have to do a modified push-up, go right ahead. Okay, again, very quickly. Here is a proper push-up. Okay, all the way down, all the way up. Your chest, your pecs cover one half inch from the floor. Okay, next exercise for our, tr our triceps, we're going to grab our water jug. Okay, we're going to hold it with two hands behind our head, which is the rear extension. Down and up, okay. Keep your arm stiff, elbow stiff, and just come down and up. All right? Give you a minute. Go get your stuff. Get ready. We'll begin our work. Ten line punches.
10 lung punches. Twenty punches. Ten long punches.
Sun Line Punch It. Twenty punches. Ten long punches.
set up for this. watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.